down in San Diego, uh, celebrating my grandmother's 99th birthday. Amazing, right? What's even crazier is that she's still really sharp and spry, and she loves to play games. She loves games. Her favorite game is called, I Could Die at Any Moment. <laughs> is there anything you would like to say to me? <laughs> it's a game the whole family can play. <laughs> Um, I'm married. Uh, I've been married for eight years. Thank you. Um, and I feel very lucky uh, because I married the man of one of my dreams. Uh, I find it surprising that so many of you are meeting your significant others on dating websites because uh, I met my husband the old-fashioned way, by cold calling. <laughs> Uh, I think my husband and I have a good marriage uh, because our upbringings, though different, complement one another. For example, uh, my husband was raised by a Jewish woman who told him every day that he was perfect and he could do no wrong. I, on the other hand, was raised by a Catholic mother who told me every day that the sins of our dead relatives were alive and burning inside of me. <laughs> Uh, my mother has a lot of encouraging sayings. As an adolescent, my mother told me that the reason that jeans don't fit me is because I have a long crotch. <laughs> For years, I thought I had an actual medical condition. LCS, long crotch syndrome. My biggest fear as a 13-year-old girl was that my crotch would continue to grow longer and longer. It didn't. <laughs> I have a daughter of my own now. Uh, don't worry, she has a short crotch. <laughs> like my husband. Uh... <laughs> and then she went like this. That's good. Um, my daughter is five, and I want to be a good role model for her. Um, as a woman raising a future woman, I worry about our gender. You know, I don't think that women treat each other very well. Uh, I remember the mean girls in high school, and they were definitely mean to me. Uh, they called me names like Long Crotch Lynn. <laughs> but I, I'm surprised that there's still women as adults shaming other women. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was uh, turning right out of a parking lot, and I misjudged how fast this car was coming. And I pulled out right in front of it. And the car, the driver uh, laid on the horn and swerved into the other lane. And we ended up at the next red light, side by side. And I could see the woman in the passenger seat glaring at me. So I rolled down my window and I said, I am so sorry, that was totally my fault back there. And she responded by saying, you're a whore. <laughs> and then the woman in the driver's seat chimed in and said, yeah, you're a dirty nipple, come loving, skanky whore. And then the light turned green and they sped off. And I continued driving, you know, and I wasn't even mad. I was just confused. I mean, how did they know so much about me? You know, I do have dirty nipples. And I love me some cum. I mean, come on. Who doesn't? And Carlisle does, yes. We already established that. So, um, as I'm nearing the next red light, I can see the two women in their Fiat stopped at that same light. And I pull up right next to them. And I say, I'm a bad driver. Hey, that doesn't make me a whore. What does make me a whore, though, is that last night, I had both your boyfriend's dicks in my mouth, and then they generously paid me for my service. <laughs> And with that, I put the pedal to the metal and I ran that red light. Because I'm a bad driver, okay? That's how that works. So uh, I continued driving and my daughter, who had been in the back seat this whole time, um, she quietly says to me, she says, Mommy. And I said, yeah, baby. She says, Mommy. Am I a whore? And I said, oh, honey, not yet. Thank you so much. I'm Lynn Scott.